Um, so I'm Antoine, this is Philip. We're from Enuma Technology. Uh, Enuma is an uh, engineering company, so basically everybody in the company is a, is a developer. Um, we've been around since 2015, worked on different blockchain uh, projects. Uh, way back we started with Bitcoin, multi-chain Ethereum, worked with different blockchains. Um, so we got a grant from Ethereum in uh, May to work on uh, Sprite's payment channels. So I'll show you what we've done here. Um, and we've also been building kind of like, after, after we've done the work on Sprites, we started working on decentralized exchange and how we can make them uh, more performant because I don't know if you've used uh, the decks that are available out there today, but a lot of them are, uh, are really slow. Uh, you have to wait a while for your transactions to be confirmed. So we're trying to solve that problem also using uh, state channels. Um, let's see. So I, I, I would have done it live, but I was having some uh, problem with the Wi-Fi. So I recorded the demo just uh, about an hour ago here, just to show you. This is the the sprites uh, demo. Um, so what what we have here is uh, on the left side is a, a merchant website. So imagine you're going to the convenience store and you want to to buy. Like I live in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, we have this card that I can top up with money, go to the merchant, swipe it, and buy buy things. So, so that's my merchant website. Oops, I think it has not paused. Um, so I can select some some items, and we're using the the Dai uh, stable coin here because I don't want my, the price of my Pepsi Coke to to change day to day. Um, so I select some items. So, 1.6 Dai, and then click on checkout. So I get a QR code, and then using the application, this is on my iPhone. Um, I'll tap to log in and unlock my, my wallet. So this is, by the way, we're mostly uh, back-end engineers, so uh, sorry for the, the UX. If, if anybody here is talented in UX, we're, we're hiring. <laughs> so, but this is mostly a dev demo to show that you can connect to the channel, then my, the balance uh, will show up and the history of transactions. Then I'll click on Make Payment. Scan the QR code, it's very fast, uh, and confirm that, that payment to the merchant. Uh, and then it says payment successful. The merchant should see the balance of 1.6. So, so by the way, here there's like three parties involved. So there's the, the end user going to the, to the shop. There's a payment provider who's the middleman. And then there's a merchant. And where Sprite comes in is that we use the conditional payments so that I can pay the payment provider the payment provider can turn around and give the money to the merchant, and then that payment is done. Uh, you know, once I reveal the, the pre-image, uh, and then the merchant can, at some point, decide to withdraw, which actually does a. This is where the unchained transaction comes in. Um, so, so typically, the merchant would withdraw maybe you know just once a day or once every you know few weeks. Uh, all the other transactions are done at layer two. Uh, this this part was just to show the the blockchain transaction ID actually, and I'll, I'll pass over to uh, Philip to talk a bit about what we've done since with uh, decentralized exchange. Thank you, Antoine. Hi. Um, so as Antoine mentioned, we are also working on um, uh, secure decentralized exchange. Uh, and uh, we've, we've been working on this since uh, a few months. And uh, our um, initial approach uh, was to use these uh, payment channel layer two uh, techniques uh, with the idea that uh, all the user would be part of a network and create channel between each other and, and then uh, be able to exchange tokens, right? And um, after analyzing this and, and trying a lot, we realized that there are many shortcomings to this uh, approach. Um, for example, um, if you use the, these um, payment channels, uh, in general, you, you need to uh, have collaterals uh, in order to ensure that the payments uh, go through. Um, then, uh, okay, we need to build this network, but uh, how do we do this? I mean, it's not easy to, to build a network. It's not only about code, it's about uh, incentiv incentivizing uh, users to join the network and so on and so on. So we had more questions than, than answers. 
Uh, and also there are like technical um, challenges, uh, like, um, okay, we have uh, plenty of orders that are spread across this uh, decentralized network. Uh, how, how do we match these orders? Who, who is going to do, to do that? So after um, thinking uh, a lot and banging our heads on the wall, <laughs> we, um, we decide to, to be step back and, and think again about the problem, right? The problem when we build uh, an exchange is that we, we want to avoid to be the, the next uh, empty Gox. So what does it mean? It means that if we want to avoid that, users should be always in control of their assets, their, their token. So having a decentralized network is a way to achieve this, but maybe there are other uh, solutions. And that's why we, we end up with this uh, concept of trustless exchange more than decentralized. And the nice thing is that we get kind of best of both worlds. We have first something that would be more like hub-based. I didn't put centralized because it's a bit <laughs> like a word you want to avoid, but it's the idea that we have a coordinator that would take all the orders, match them, and update the balance correctly, but at the same time, uh, it would be uh, trustless. And this one, and if we have these both things, we can be both efficient uh, and secure. So at the very high level, how, how it work? Well, we'll have this hub that will take the orders and, and match them, and from time to time, it would synchronize with the blockchain to ensure that all the balances have been updated correctly. And users will uh, use the blockchain only to deposit and withdraw and all the rest will be made with the, through, the, through the hub. So yes, there's still uh, quite some work uh, uh, to do on this, uh, in particular uh, analyzing uh, the security in, details, uh, in detail. Uh, when you build a new protocol, uh, you, you need to um, verify, be sure that uh, there's no like uh, flaws and problems, uh, and also uh, being able to, to um, implement like the, the, the feature of uh, an exchange like uh, atomic swaps and, and partial order. And now um, Antoine is going to, to show a little demo of what you have so far. Thanks, Philip. Um, yeah, the demo uh, may not look so impressive, but what we've done is we've implemented all the, the theory of how at layer two uh, an exchange would be done, atomic exchange, completely trustless. Um, and so what's missing from the demo would be the on-chain part, like depositing and withdrawing at the end. But uh, just to give you an idea of, um, of how this would actually, you know, some of the, the code we have, like we actually create um, an exchange object, we create multiple different trading pairs. There's two parties involved here that are going to, to deposit uh, money uh, in the channel uh, and then trade with each other, so they do create uh, order objects, and then these orders are being matched. And, and each order, you see, when I place an order, the order has to be signed by the first party. And then to take an order that's been placed in the order book, I also have to sign. Um, you know, if you're interested, uh, come see us after. I'll give you all the, the details. But uh, when I, I run it on my old MacBook, this is a 2015 MacBook, uh, where you take advantage of all the cores. Should finish pretty soon. No. So I just got, got under like 2,000 transactions per second. Like again, like at layer two. So so we are working on mechanisms to you know to handle the deposits, the withdrawals, and also there's some synchronization that needs to happen on chain at some frequency. But this is the kind of number we can expect, like even from an from an old machine. So, and this is horizontally scalable, so we can add more nodes to to the network. Okay. Hello. Thank you.